This is my video response to the four riddles that were posed on the Veritasium channel for revolutionary motion, I believe is how it was phrased. Um, I'm not sure I would agree with calling them riddles per se. I would say that uh, the one of them could be described as a physics problem, the, the average speed question. Uh, the other three I would describe as being really good conceptual questions. So well done job. Uh, this is my series of answers to those four questions. I'm gonna answer them not in the same order that they're presented in the original video. Uh, I, I think that there's, there's one that is uh, kind of stand out a little bit more so from the other three, so I'll present them in that order, but uh, I'd be curious to see what, uh, what your feedback is. If, if you agree with me or disagree with me, I'd love to hear either way. Thanks for watching. Okay, the first question I'm going to tackle involves the, the two laps in which we wish to average twice V1, in which V1 was the first speed that we had for the first lap. How fast do we have to go in the second lap to average twice V1? Well, just to make this really clear and, and somewhat conceptual, I have a simpler version of the question with actual numbers chosen here. Let me explain. This red square represents the person who's going to run around the track. Now, the fact that it was a circular track in the original question is a, a bit of a complication that is completely unnecessary. We're dealing with speed, not velocity. Speed is a scalar. It doesn't depend on direction of travel. It doesn't depend on if the path that you move through was straight or curved. So even though it was a circular track in the original question, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do a straight line version of this. Same math in the end. So I've chosen actual values here. I'm going to say that my V1 for the first track, or the first lap I should say, is exactly one meter per second. And I am going to suggest that going in a straight line, getting to this four meter mark represents the completion of the first lap. So in effect, I'm choosing a distance for my first lap to be four meters. The second lap is an additional four meters being the length of the lap. So if I run the simulation right, I'm just gonna show you what happens here. This red square is going to do something really simple. It's gonna go at one meter per second the whole time. So let's just watch how this plays out. Covering one meter every second, it literally takes, I'm just gonna hit pause roughly about there, close enough, it takes pretty much four seconds to get to the halfway point. So four meters is the length of my track, uh, moving at one meter per second constant, it takes me four seconds to complete one lap. Now this red square is just gonna keep on going, so it's going to do the exact same thing for the second lap, and uh, of course that means it's gonna complete the both laps in eight seconds. That's not what we want. What we want to do is we want to have some kind of a transition occur at the midpoint so that we will average twice this V1. Now, since my V1 is literally one meter per second, what I'm after is somehow averaging two meters per second throughout the whole motion, but I have to maintain one meter per second for the first half of this path. So again, it's not what I want, but let me show you something that may help visualize this. Here's another object, this time uh, blue to distinguish it from the original object. This object is gonna go at a constant two meters per second the whole way through. Now again, we wanna have a transition occur, but think about it. If I want my object to average two meters per second, in effect, I have to do the same thing that this object that moves at a constant two meters per second is gonna do, at least in terms of the overall motion. So what I really wanna have is this. Run the simulation, my red object is going one meter per second, Notice that the blue object gets to the finish line. I'll just try to hit pause close enough there. Finishes right there. I've got to have some kind of a transition occur such that my red object will finish in a, in a tie with my blue object. It will cover the same overall path, eight meters, in the same overall time, four seconds. Now, hopefully you're already spotting that there's gonna be a problem with this, but let me show you a common answer that I've seen in the uh, comment section. A lot of people said, oh, this is an easy question. All you have to do is have your object, this green object, all you have to do is have it move at the V1, which is again, one meter per second in my chosen version of this, and easy, just, just make it go at three meters per second for the second half. So one meter per second, uh, go three times faster for the second half of this, uh, of this race, the second lap at least. Let me just show you how that looks. This is going to do exactly that. It's going to go at V1, one meter per second, just like the red object, for the first half. It will then transition so as to go three meters per second for the second lap. I'm just going to play that for you. The red and the green, same thing. One meter per second for both. Now watch the green object. It transitions, boom, three meters per second. Uh, it does indeed get to the finish line, but this is a failure. 
In order for it to have averaged two meters per second, like the blue object, you have to understand it must be a tie finished between the blue object and my successful object. This was not a tie. The green object certainly did not finish, I'm just kind of playing this through a little bit, the green object did not finish as a tie with my blue object. Uh, in other words, my green object completes, if I just kind of continue this simulation, the green object completes the total track in about five and a third seconds. That is not averaging two meters per second. Some other people in the comment section said, well, you have to be going four meters per second. Three meters per second apparently being not quite fast enough. Well, uh, just again, in the sake of clarity here, here is that situation. This one will transition to four meters per second, and uh, we'll just see how this plays out. So these three are all doing the same thing. This is the first lap at one meter per second. This is what we desire to tie with that one. And um, yeah, four meters per second for the orange one. Again, it doesn't work. It's not a tie. So here's the problem. The problem is, this is impossible. In order to average two meters per second, I must finish as a tie with the object that maintained two meters per second. Uh, if I'm gonna go at one meter per second for the first lap, right there, I literally have no time left at all to complete my second lap so as to finish as desired, averaging at two meters per second. The answer is that this is flat out impossible short of teleportation. If the red object could teleport over to the finish line, taking zero time to do so, only then would my red object have averaged two meters per second for the two laps. The answer is it's impossible. All right, so hopefully seeing the, the animation, the simulation was of some help in seeing why it's impossible, but let me show you the math just to back this up. It is not some kind of a trick. Math will back us up that this is not possible. Here's how I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna realize that each of the two laps is being treated as uniform motion, constant speed. There was no acceleration. We're assuming that the transition from one lap to the next was magically instantaneous just for the sake of simplification. So here's what I should be able to write. For the first lap, the distance that we travel is whatever the length of the track is. That could be a circumference around a circle, it could be my straight line, it could be the four meters that I had in my simulation, it could be whatever. I'm just gonna designate that as X and just leave it open to, uh, to future values, whatever you wanna put in. The time that it takes, I have no idea. How fast are we going? Well, the speed is being literally designated V1. These three uh, variables can be put into an equation for uniform speed because it traveled with a constant speed for this lap. Uh, and that means that V1 is equal to the distance traveled, X, over the time that it took to travel that, T1. I'm gonna solve that for T1 to find out that the time that we must complete our first lap will be X over V1. And I'm just gonna come back to that shortly, but there's the amount of time that it would take to complete the first lap. All right, let me transition over to the second lap. Lap two. Well, lap two is, in terms of distance, exactly the same as the first lap, so X again. The time that it takes to do that, T2, I have no idea. How fast are we traveling? Well, it's gonna, again, be a constant speed that we don't know, I will call it V2. These three can be put together into the exact same equation, another instance of uniform motion. So that means that V2 is equal to distance traveled X divided by the time that it took to do so, T2. I'm gonna again solve this for the time that it would take to travel this. T2 must be equal to X over V2. All right, so we've got an equation for the first lap, we've got an equation for the second lap. Let me do one more analysis here. Let me look at the overall two laps. Now, even though there's a transition of speed in the middle, we can still look at this from a point of view of an average, doing it basically the same way that we did before. So the distance traveled is going to be two X because we've done each lap, both, uh, or rather both laps, each of which is X. Now, according to the premise of the question, our speed, our average speed must be twice the original speed for the first lap. I wonder how much time this is gonna take us. I'm gonna designate this as T total, just to be very clear of what I'm calculating. Well, again, I can put this into an equation. 
Doing so gives us the average speed equal to distance traveled. Well, that was 2x divided by the time that it took to do so, t total. And let me calculate this uh, for t total, or solve this for t total. t total would be equal to 2x over the average speed. But we know that the average speed is to be twice the speed of the first lap, according to the question. That means that the total time to complete both laps must be equal to, well, the twos cancel, x over v1. Now here's the problem. The time that we have to complete both laps, which can be expressed as x over v1, is exactly the same as the time that we've already used in our first lap, x over v1. That means that there is literally zero time left over for our second lap. Uh, to make that very, very clear, what I can do is go back to uh, my lap two. Lap two, how about if I write it this way? The time for the second lap is the time that we used in total, subtract however much time it took us to complete the first lap. Yeah, whatever time remains, that's how much time we have for our second lap. But the total time we know to be x over v1. And if I subtract the time that we've already spent in our first lap, way up here, that was in blue, that's also x over v1. Now, even though I don't know values of x and I don't know values of v1, it should be hopefully clear to you that the time that we have left over for the second lap is precisely zero. Now, now uh, with the time for the second lap now known to be zero, I should be able to say the speed for that second lap is the distance traveled over zero, and there's our problem. We have no solution for this. We're trying to divide by zero. Uh, one interpretation using the math a bit loosely would be we would need an infinite speed or, or teleportation or, or what have you, but the bottom line is, in effect, there is no solution. Can't be done.